Hey everybody, it's Dan the Get School Dude once again with another Git tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about finding when two commits first diverge. So let's go ahead and get started here. Today we're going to be using the History Emulator repository. Uh, we're, we're not actually, we don't really care what's in this repository today. We're just going to be looking at the history. So uh, if I do get log, obviously we can see the history. There's uh, various switches to get log, which I have alias to GT, which give you a graph view. This will show the, the parental relationships between commits. So if we just paste this in here, um, we can see uh, a slightly different view which um, it will show the parental relationships if there are any. Now in this case the master branch has uh, linear history as we can see but there are other branches here so if we were to use our alias and instead of just the master branch we give it uh, this feature X branch we'll see the parental history here. So for example uh, commit 0A7 has uh, the parent A79 and also CF3 also has the parent A79. So this is a representation of uh, a branch, uh, so to speak, in the history uh, divergence. So today we're talking about finding where two commits diverge. Now, if you can get a view that looks like this in a tool like either get log with these switches or get K, sometimes the answer to this is trivial. So for example, if we wanted to know when the master branch first diverged from the feature X branch, we can just look here and see, okay, well, which commit is the first most common ancestor for both of these lines of development? So 611 and DEB, we can just trace back and we can see, okay, well, this DEB goes here, goes here, goes here, A79, and we can do the same thing here and trace all the way back until we find A79. A79 is the first commit here that is common in both the history of the feature X branch and the master branch. I hope that makes sense. So that's a trivial case, but if you've ever seen Git histories, you may notice that they look far more complicated. Here's the same view except showing all branches, and you can see it's a little more complicated here. Well, in real software projects, not the fake ones I make for these videos, this branching becomes out of control ridiculous in that these lines showing the relationships start breaking out to the right, to the right, and it, you can't see uh, enough information about the, the structure of the tree to actually trivially find the merge base. So, Git provides something very nice. Let's go back and look at the view where we're only look at the master and the feature X branch. There's a, there's a uh, command called git merge base that takes two commits. This is the form of the command. You give it two commits and it will return you a commit. So let's go through this example where we take uh, the master branch and the feature X branch. And this command is saying, give me the most common ancestor. Give me the merge base of these two states in history. And what does it return? It returns A796, which is the commit that we visually saw earlier, uh, which was uh, the merge base in the trivial case. So what's great about this is that this command will search the tree for you. So when the history gets out of control, uh, you can always use this command to find the most common ancestor for the two branches. Real quick as an aside, let's talk about actually traversing this history visually because I find it's easy to screw up and I have a quick rule that I think will help everyone else too. So one of the biggest problems I do is I'm looking for the parent of a particular commit. I look for visually where is the closest next commit. My eye goes there and my eye says this is a parent of this. B30 is a parent of 9EA. That is not true. And it's because my rules are wrong. The rule I should be using is for whatever commit you're interested in, go to the asterisk and follow the lines. Do not look at the commit SHA ones until you get to another asterisk. So in this example, we got to another asterisk, 
and we found commit 4761, which is a parent of commit 9EA where we started. That, if you follow that rule, you won't get confused. Uh, so always follow that rule, and let, we'll do one more for example. Let's, uh, let's start with B30B. Let's not look for the nearest commit, although in this case it happens to be that. We start at the asterisk, and then we go to the line till we hit another asterisk, and then we read the commit message. If we were to start here, we follow the red line till we hit an asterisk. That makes sense, right? And that's what's confusing about this, is that a lot of times it will be the closest commit, but it's not always. So always remember that rule. Start with the commit, go to the asterisk, follow the lines till you hit another asterisk, then read the commit. That's the parental relationship. So why might you care about this? You might ask the question, well, why do I care what the merge base of two commits or two branches is? Uh, that's a pretty good question. There's only a few scenarios where you would actually care, but one common one would be something like, uh, let's say, you know, we're looking at the, the master branch and the feature X branch here. Let's say you wanted to diff feature X branch against the branch that it came off of, which it came off of the master branch in this case. Well, if you were to diff, say, feature X, you know, and you, you use uh, diff feature X, master this will give you all the diffs between these two branches well how useful is that to someone you know the master branch has probably moved forward since the feature branch has uh, branched off which it has we see these commits up here Do, does the developer really want to see the differences between their branch and the state of the tip of master usually not usually they want to know what's different on my branch compared to the last time I merged with master, which in this case is the merge base A79. So if you're wondering what that commit is, that's what the purpose of git merge base is. All right, I wanna show you what happens when you do this command uh, for two commits that are fast forward ahead of each other. For example, 4761 is fast forward ahead of 7B4. So if we were to do git merge base 7B4, 476, we're going to get 7B4. Why do we get this? Well, it's pretty trivial. The reason is, you know, typically we're looking for the common merge base, the last point two branches diverged. But in this case, there, there is no branching from the perspective of divergent code. There's only this commit, and this commit was laid on top of it, and then this commit. So what ends up happening when you do a git merge base between two commits that are fast forward, one's fast forward ahead of the other, is you're gonna get the oldest commit uh, echoed back to you, which is what we're seeing here. Keeping this video short, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dan the Git School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time.